Hi, I'm Sarah, and I have to give myself a shot at least five times a day. And I'm Kyle, and I'm a good friend of Sarah's. You don't owe me for anything, but if you want to buy me cheesecake, cheesecake bars, I'm not going to say no. Does Sarah prefer sweet or savory? Sweet, because you love caramel apples, and I don't understand why. <laughs> <laughs> I do like caramel apples. And you bake a lot. I do bake, but some of that's savory. I'd say I'm like 50-50. Sure. So is this like half right It's like then? low blood sugar sweets. Well, and also everything else in sight. And fair, then fair. otherwise savory. Okay, so I'm gonna say this is a point for me though. <laughs> it's a half a point. It's a half a point. Is Sarah an introvert or an extrovert? I'm gonna do this with a little bit of a caveat. I think you're an introvert, but you can extrovert very well. I would say that you are an either an introvert who can extrovert or a lowercase e extrovert. I think you're right in the first one with, yeah, I'm definitely an introvert, but I can extrovert if I want to, yeah. but I need my downtime afterwards to be like, I don't want to see people anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Unless it's you. Okay. What one word would Sarah use to describe herself? Okay, so I wrote collected. You always like know who you are, you're grounded. I don't know if people <laughs> like see that in themselves, but that's, that's a think, word I would use. I definitely didn't think of that. I think what I was thinking is like, independent, but like mm. it kind of on the same lines as of collected is like, because I know who I am. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm going to do what I want to do. Yeah. Independent. So. That's, that was probably the word I had in my head. Collected's good too though. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'll take it. What would Sarah say is her favorite sport? It's rugby. It's rugby. <laughs> it's rugby. Yeah. I do love rugby. There's a need for like every single type of body type on the pitch. And there's just so much, especially in women's rugby, there's so much like body positivity, so much focus on like what your body can do, which I didn't get that at all growing up. What would Sarah say is the hardest thing she's been through? The, okay. I, the, so before I show you the answer, I yeah. think this is just something that you've talked to me a lot about okay. with regards to your life. But you always have a lot of trouble with like health insurance and, and, and things like that. Being someone with chronic illnesses, more than just diabetes, that has definitely been a pain in the butt. It's just that like constant compounding of like multiple small things that just like add up to this like big heavy weight. How old was Sarah when she was diagnosed with diabetes? Were you perhaps nine years old? Almost oh, double that. <laughs> okay. Wow, I was really No, I wrong. wasn't like a young kid when I was diagnosed. I was 17. I had a ton of symptoms before I was diagnosed, but I had no idea that they were symptoms of type 1 diabetes at all. I was at the children's clinic and they were like, well, your blood sugars are off the chart. So then I went to the hospital and that was still off the charts. And so they said I was like two days from a coma, which is crazy to think about. Wow. Yeah. So I was really sick. So I was in there for like a week or a week and a half or something. Um, and then the rest of my life happened. <laughs> life after diabetes. Yeah. I don't think you've ever told me that. Yeah. How many times a week does Sarah need to take an insulin injection? <laughs> I know you do it and I, we've been together when you've done it. I've yeah. never like paid attention to like how often you do it. I'm going to say 42 because there are seven days in a week. Perhaps you do it six times a day, unsure. And that would be 42. I know that the math is yeah. right. The math is right. My logic I think is right. You're actually probably totally spot on with that. Well, <laughs> look at you. If it was based off of actual knowledge, I would have felt better. What was Sarah's lowest moment in dealing with her diabetes? I like... don't know if I can even fathom a guess because yeah. I, I feel like you kind of keep those parts to yourself a little bit. Yeah, that's true. I mean, it's hard because like most people don't understand. The hardest parts for me are you like can't figure it out sometimes like because there's like so many things that affect your blood sugar. Once you want to make a change for that and like get to the point where you can say, hey, maybe I need to do this differently. You have to wait a day. So it's not just like that constant, but it's also like not being able to make a change in the moment 
and see like instant results. What is a favorite food that Sarah wishes she could eat without consequence? I'm gonna go with this because I'm gonna go with cheesecake. I knew you were gonna no, write that. I knew <laughs> because she got me a book one year for my birthday that was all about cheesecake recipes. I never grew up like eating cheesecake. Um, you have made me love cheesecake, so that's good. I've um, done my job. I would say like the biggest thing for me is I kind of wish that I could just eat like regular plain pasta. Because I think this is a really common like type one diabetes thing um, is that people like metabolize it a little strange. But I wish I could just eat like normal pasta sometimes, you know, right. like sometimes you just want some like macaroni and cheese. Yes. And yes. I really don't eat that ever. So Often the craving that I have. Yeah. yeah. Along with cheesecake. Along with, with cheesecake. Cheese. How many different decisions a day do you think Sarah has to make around her diabetes? A hundred plus. I imagine that you have to like figure out what you're eating at all times and determine when you go on walks. I mean, we've talked yeah. about this before. Yeah. I've driven a few times to places because you're like, I'm low and you have to bring snacks. I just the last can't, two times we got together, right? I can't imagine. Yeah. I don't know if it's like a hundred plus. The general like average that people say is like 80 times a day that diabetics have to make extra decisions compared to a normal person. Some days it's worse, some days it's better. Some days it's certainly 100 plus. Yeah. I would like to think that there's days where it's less than 80. Obviously making those extra decisions throughout the day is can lead to huge amounts of burnout and just like being overwhelmed by it. But at the same time, like um, I think about when I was newly diagnosed and I didn't have all the information that I do now and all the extra knowledge. Being able to make those extra decisions throughout the day allows me to live the life that I want to. Mm -hmm. Like in that sense, being able to make those decisions and have the information I need to be able to do that is actually an amazing thing too. That's a good answer. <laughs> what would Sarah say is the personality trait that helps her the most? I am forgetting every adjective that exists in this moment. <laughs> I should have brought a thesaurus. <laughs> I'm gonna go with tenacity. Actually, yeah. You're a very tenacious person. Yeah. And I think that you're tenacious about community, you're tenacious about ensuring that people know about diabetes. It's a very respectable trait. I mean, I feel like tenacious people get a lot of stuff done. And Actually, you that's get like, a lot of stuff done, so. Yeah, that's honestly like pretty close to what I was thinking is like, determined and like strong-willed just gonna like get it done and I don't know what else there is to say otherwise well, you're, you're, you're just tenacious. On. <laughs> I am tenacious I'll take that that's a good one what would Sarah say she is most proud of again writing the novel no I just no. it's something that you've you talk about I would say increasing the uh, visibility of diabetes like the struggles that people with diabetes have because you, I mean, you mentioned before it's like an invisible disease but you've been you've done a lot of work with like on your Instagram just like talking about it and on your Facebook just like helping people see the the impact that it has in your life both positive yeah. and negative yeah I wouldn't I like I don't know if I can think of like one particular thing that I'm most proud of yeah. in my life like but like I definitely do find a lot of pride in like being able to help out my own community. I've always said that I've learned so much from the actual type one diabetes community. And I feel that because I've learned all of that information, like I have a, like the need to pass it on. I enjoy being with people in that community and I also being able like to help out those people. So, and it ultimately helps myself too. So yeah. <laughs> I'm still learning. Yeah. So. <laughs> I enjoyed this. I knew you'd be good at it. Any excuse I get to hang out with Sarah is a, is a good is a good time. I obviously aim to not make diabetes the number one thing in my life, but yeah, I thought you did good. Thank you. It's like you know me. It's I like think we've been friends good. for over ten years, and like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I'll come watch you play rugby sometime. I promise. <laughs> What's your favorite thing about me? I'm kidding. <laughs> you. Uh...